What is going on guys? Welcome back to my channel. And today we're going to talk about EOS because I've been doing some programming with EOS and I want to share my experiences with you guys. And you may know that software development programming is my biggest passion. I've been programming since I was nine years old and uh, I've always been doing projects in my spare time when I was young and when I went to high school and so on and so forth. And uh, uh, I also worked for a long time as a software developer. And so I love playing with technology. I love exploring technology. And EOS has for a long time been on my to-do list. And so... Uh, I've taken my time and uh, I played around with the source code. I'm still new, I'm still learning because this is a new technology. You may know that the testnet was released in the early December and EOS itself will be released in uh, uh, during the summer next year. So everyone is new when it comes to EOS development. And in this video, I want to share my first experiences with EOS and developing smart contracts on top of EOS. And before we start, I want to share with you the outline of the online course, which you can buy on pre-sale right now at academy.ivanontech.com and get more than 50% off. So this course is for people who want to learn the fundamentals in blockchain technology and are really serious. Because as you can see here in the course contents, basically here are the different lectures, you will will get different lectures, you will get quizzes and exams in this course, and it will be in several parts here, as you can see, covering different things, everything from how Bitcoin and Ethereum work to the industrial use cases of this technology to how to assess ICOs and so on and so forth. So it will give you a broad overview, you will get the fundamentals and you will get your knowledge base that you can rely upon when you navigate this cryptocurrency landscape. So guys, if you are interested, go to academy.ivanontech.com and buy the course on pre-sale before February the 1st. And that being said, guys, let's get into it. So first of all, I want to share with you the process of uh, getting up to speed, getting the EOS software installed, getting it running, and so on and so forth. And I have to warn you guys that this video will be uh, technical. It will be a lot more technical than we usually do here on the channel. Because this video is mainly for people who are interested in developing on EOS and are interested maybe in building smart contracts themselves. So it will be technical, but it can be beneficial for you to watch even if you're not a programmer, just to get a feel of what we're actually doing. Because when you invest in cryptocurrencies, you invest in technology startups. So maybe if you have a glimpse of how <laughs> software development actually works, and uh, how we developers live and what we do, uh, it might give you a better position. But just to warn everybody, this will be a bit technical. So uh, if you go to EOS GitHub and you want to get up to speed, what, what I did is I basically followed the instructions here. So you get very good instructions. Obviously I have a Mac, so I follow the Mac instructions. And the good thing is that this build script worked very well for me. It actually did all of the job. However, it might be the case that for some reason this build script doesn't work for you. Maybe you have some other operating system version that doesn't match the script or there is some other environmental issues so that the script doesn't work. In that case, you can follow the uh, installation instructions step by step instead by just running the script. But for me, I could run the script and that worked out fine. And so when you run the script, you get the EOS software basically installed. And once you have it installed, what you're looking for is these two programs, EOS C and EOS D. And you can find them if you go to your EOS folder and then you go to uh, build and then you go to programs and here you will find EOS C right here and here is the binary and uh, here you also see EOS D and those are the two important programs that we're going to be using in this uh, video. So what is EOS D? EOS D is the daemon that runs uh, and I can show you here. So here I have my EOS D daemon running and it is producing blocks. So this is what actually is the EOS network currently. I'm only running it on my computer. I'm not connected to the testnet, the live testnet. This is only locally on my computer. And as you can see, it is producing blocks. And I'm now at block 19,430. So I've been running this for a while. 
And you have this running in the background. And obviously you have to know how to use the terminal in order to follow this at all. And now the second uh, command you have here is, uh, uh, the second uh, binary you have here is EOSC. And this is the EOS command line interface which makes you able to communicate with the blockchain and the network that, that you have running. And so you have EOSD running in the background and you can use EOSC to issue different commands. So for example, you can create new accounts, you can publish uh, contracts, you can uh, interact with contracts and so on and so forth. And so how do EOS contracts really work? How do you create EOS contracts? What do you use uh, for language and so on and so forth? So what we will do now is that we will take a look at some demo contracts here on GitHub and then I will show you how I have modified one contract and how I have extended one contract and then we'll take a look. So in order to see some uh, demo contracts, you can go here to contracts and you'll see a list um, of different contracts that EOS team have written in order to show us how, how to write contracts. Because this is new technology, there are not many people developing EOS programs currently. So if you're new to this field, you're new to this space and you want to learn, there aren't many resources, <laughs> honestly. So it is very good that they have some uh, contracts for us to look at in order to learn. Also, they have an excellent Telegram group, or at least when I had questions, I could just ask and people answered very quickly. So take a look at uh, EOS developer Telegram. And let, let's take a look at the currency contract. So this contract basically represents a currency. You may know that there are many currencies running on top of Ethereum, all of these ICOs creating their own coins. So if we would like to create our own coin on EOS, this is how we would do it. We would do a contract like this. And as you can see, it is C in C++. When you see CPP, it means C++. So here we have the implementation file with C++ code. Here we have the header file. And here we also have something called the ABI file. So what is that? Uh, you may or not, maybe you haven't, but there is this technology uh, called uh, WebAssembly. WebAssembly is getting a lot of steam. It is becoming a standard on the web and uh, uh, EOS uses WebAssembly. So in order to write WebAssembly applications, you use C++. And uh, if you're familiar with C++, you know that this is where the code is, where the actual logic is, and here is where we define uh, structures and uh, uh, variables, and basically this is the interface uh, uh, documentation, uh, if you will. So if we take a look here, we see that uh, it is defining the structures, it is defining... Uh, the um, uh, the different types we have here. So here we have accounts, for example, and uh, so on. So the actual logic is not here. The actual logic is in CPP file right here. So here here's where we have the logic. And the ABI file is basically uh, like the header file. It contains the same information, but it contains it in the JSON format. And uh, uh, this, uh, this is something we have in WebAssembly, so the, this notion of ABI. Uh, and if we would like to add, for example, new functionality to this current currency program uh, contract, what we would do is that we would add uh, things in HT HPP, we would add things in CPP, and we would add things in ABI. And I'm going to show you how to do that because I've taken this currency contract and I have expanded it a bit uh, and we will talk about that. So what does this currency contract do currently? Uh, this isn't going to be an in-depth explanation of the code uh, and this is not the intention of this video. I just wanted to give you a brief overview how the development and code and basically how you would work like if you, if you are developing EOS. So I will explain it briefly but what it does is that it, uh, when it creates, let's actually go to the C++ implementation file. Uh, when, it, when the contract is launched, we, we are here in this init function. And so when this contract is created, it uh, assigns itself it, assi it assigns itself 1 billion coins. So let's say that we are creating Ivan coin on top of EOS and when we launch the smart contract, it will assign itself 
this many coins. And as you can see, this is a billion coins. So this smart contract would hold 1 billion coins and no one else would have any of these coins that we have just created. And here uh, below you see apply. And uh, mm, you can communicate with this contract. So once we launch this contract, we can communicate with it. And how do we communicate? Well, we send the different commands. And how does the contract interpret the commands? How does it know what to do when it hears a command? Well, this is why we have the apply method right here. And uh, as you can see, it will listen to commands. And if the command or the action, as it is called here, if the action is equal to transfer, we, we execute this method right here. So, and then we don't do anything else. So if we hear some other command that is not transfer, we don't do anything. So this contract only will respond to the action called transfer. And the transfer action will basically uh, take some money from one account right here and put it into another account. So we can basically say, this contract, you know what you should do? You should transfer this much money from this account to the second account. And this is all this contract does. So to recap, the contract will create a billion coins. It will give it to itself, but then it can receive transfer commands. So for example, I can tell the contract, hey, send me some money and the contract will send the money to the address, the account that I specify. And then I can specify to give it um, uh, and say, give some money to this address and it would do that. So let's take a look at how this would actually look like. How do we interact with this contract? Uh, and I have already uh, my daemon running here and I have already uploaded the contract to uh, to this little network that I have on my computer. And so let's clear. And so how would we interact with it? Well, we do like this. We push messages. So as you can see, we're using the EOS C uh, uh, binary, the I, uh, EOS C software that is this uh, command line interface. And then we can push a message. And then we need to specify which contract we're pushing it to. And so uh, let me just go here. And uh, this contract, I've called it currency when I uploaded it. And you can find instructions on how to upload the contract here in the in this file right here in the main on the main page. So here they will tell you how to upload the contract. And I have already uploaded it. And I've called it currency. And then I call the command transfer right here. And then I can specify that I want to transfer from this contract currency to this account called init B and they want to transfer 50 of those. So let's do that. And as we can see, it went through when you see this uh, uh, feedback. And now we can take a look at init B. So as you can see, init B now has 1 million and the 100 coins. And if I call this thing again, and I see how many coins init B has. So this is how you get the number of coins. You query the table called um, uh, account basically and you interact with the currency contract so if we call this again you see it's 150 and if i call this again it is uh, it is 1 million 200 and here it was 1 million 150 so we are transferring funds from the currency contract to init b account and in the same way we can take a look at how many coins are left in the currency contract like this. So we have this many coins. And if I transfer some more coins, you see that it decreases to 750 from, from 800 that we saw right here. Uh, and so this is how we can interact with the contract. We basically call this, uh, uh, we push a message with the name transfer. And when we say so that we want to transfer, this would go to to the apply function, let me see, uh, this would go to the apply function right here and it would be recognized as a transfer message when we do like this. So now we can transfer coins from one account to another, but I wanted to expand this um, uh, contract as an exercise for myself. So what I added is another uh, 
action, another command that this uh, that this uh, uh, contract could obey, and this is called give million, as you can see here. So I've added a new function, a, a new uh, action, you can say. And so when I call give million, I have to specify what account I want to give a million coins to, and then the contract would basically create one million coins from no nowhere. It would basically mint one million new coins of this currency we're, we're building together. And it would give it to this account called initB. So let's execute that. And let's, let's take a look at how many coins initB has. As you can see, it's 2,250,000. If we do the same thing again and we take a look, now it's 3 million. So I've added simple functionality that suddenly we can generate 1 million coins from nothing and we can give it to an account. And uh, this functionality is not here from the beginning. So it is not in the demo uh, code. So how did I add this functionality? How was I able to do so? Well, first of all, what, what I did was that I went to the ABI file right here and I created a new, uh, first of all, a new action right here called give million and it has a type give million and I now needed to create this type, which I did right here. As you can see, I had to add it to the structs um, array and so I created give million and now it has one field called give to. So when I, as you can see, when I gave a million coins, I had to spe specify give to. I have to say which account do I want to give this million coins to. And we basically explain to EOS that uh, this is how the structure will look like when we, uh, when we send these messages. And I also had to do this little struct right here, which is called give million. And it just um, tells EOS that we will only give one account name as an argument. So you will receive an account name, this will be your argument and that's it. But here in the ABI we had to be, uh, we had to both define an action and uh, the type. And then we go here to C++, the implementation, and you see that I added an extra uh, else statement. And so if the action is transfer, we just do this code we normally did. But if now the action is give million, then we do this code right, right here. So it would actually know the difference. So if we have give million here, it would do this code right here. But if we had transfer here, like we did before, it would go and execute this code instead. And so as you can see, we have this new apply give million function. And what it does is very simple. It just uh, uh, fetches the account right here from the arguments uh, and it uh, gives it 1 million coins and then it saves the account. So the procedure for creating a new action is to add one thing here in the header, add some uh, uh, some uh, structures here, for example, the type give million and the action and um, add um, a uh, in here in the parser, you have to add what to do with the with this command and add the code. And so this is how I was able to do it. So guys, I know that this was a bit technical. I just wanted to give you a an bird's eye view of how this works. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something and uh, if you are a new viewer and you like blockchain, technology, cryptocurrencies, you should definitely subscribe to this channel, guys, because you will find this channel interesting. And push that bell button, <coughs> subscribe button, like button. And uh, I myself am a software developer. Check out academy.ivanotech.com. And I'll see you guys next time.